Welcome, Vintage Gamers, to probably one of the biggest vintage events of the year, Mana Traders 15k. Uh, you had to win a bunch of matches in a qualification period over the course of a month, have like a 60 to 70% win rate, and that qualified you for the Swiss tournament that is today. If you wanted to see my qualification matches, go check out the A to Z challenge I recorded in four or five videos on my channel. I qualified for this with a 72% win rate, winning once with every deck in the format, which was a ton of fun, a blast. Thank you everyone for hanging out and bearing with me during that ride. It was a good time. Today, we're playing an open deck list, 107 player tournament with seven rounds of Swiss. And I am playing Pio because I think Pio is the best deck in the format. That's not Doomsday. Um, I think it's extremely well positioned against all of the best decks i think you're 50 50 versus doomsday you are pretty f close to 50 50 or favored versus breach you are beating shops you are beating hogak uh, so you have good matchups across the field uh, obviously we don't play saga because that would make our deck worse against that field um if there was a bunch of jeskai and pyroblast and control decks running around then you would want to play saga uh what we have is a meta uh an esper po list tuned to a metagame that is playing um Fast and free magic. I think Lavinia is one of the best cards to play right now. It's good against Hogak. It's good against um, Doomsday and Tinker and all of those things. Uh, so we're playing main deck Lavinia's two of. Um, we're playing still playing main deck Swords and Balance. I thought there'd be a little bit more Hogak than there actually was. Um, the Hogak numbers ended up being smaller. This is what the tournament field looks like. These are not my um, archetype groupings, but they're still pretty similar. Um, the biggest things that will stand out to you are 14 Hogak, 11 Oops All spells, which is insane. Uh, 18 workshops. So, 11 oops is crazy to me. Um, that's kind of the, the flavor of the month right now. But the good news is Lavinia is great against that. And also, Dress Down is just, like, randomly good against it. Um, you can stop their, their ETB trigger on a spy. But better yet, you let the spy trigger resolve. And then with the Narcomoeva's on the stack, play a Dress Down. And then, uh, the Thassa's Oracle will have no text. They can't win. They lose. Uh, so, uh, I'm pretty excited, uh, that we have, like, another piece of hate that is actually good against them. I, I kind of thought there would be more, uh, I kind of thought there would be more hate bears style decks, which is why I played Swords, Balance, Dress Down. Um, that didn't end up being the case, so a little bit off on the metagame call. Kind of a low number of shops, but still, like, a decent number. We still have four Hercules, but we didn't have one in the main. I don't think you need the one in the main, but I might have wanted one in the main for this tournament. A little hard to say. Um, you will notice that I messed up my fetch lands in this tournament. Uh, one of these flooded strands should be a Delta, and one of these strands should be, like, a Tarn. Uh, what happened was I was testing a Plains in the sideboard, which I liked, uh, but then I cut. And then I was testing a Caracas in the sideboard, because I thought there'd be a bunch of other Lavinia decks, but then I cut it. Uh, and I never forgot to change back my, um, my fetch lands. So, a small, uh, mistake in this deck list would be switch your fetch lands back to what I played normally. Uh, usually I play, like, two Misty, two Tarn. One delta, one str one strand, uh, just to play around fetch it, uh, to play around needles, and in a closed deckless format, um, your opponent is less likely to name Misty or Tarn when you're playing Esper. That's how I feel. Uh, but yeah, in a closed deck, this is an open deckless format. I will show you what we're playing against every round, and I will know what we're playing against every round. Which I was telling chat makes it so I want to register a forcible deck. I don't want to register Bazaar or Shops in an open deckless format because I think you lose a lot of the advantage of those decks. A lot of the advantage of those decks is people keep a generically strong hand that isn't good against Bazaar or isn't good against Shops and they get punished. Uh, when I can see your decklist and know that you're on Bazaar and Shops, I can keep a hand tuned to that. The deck, the hands that you keep to, like, to beat Shops are very different. Uh, and I, I would, you know, I, I would think we're going to try to exploit that during the day. I also, like, if I look across the table and I know my opponent doesn't have Force of Will or Force of Negation, I can do tons of different lines in terms of jamming on turn one. So, um, I'm excited. It should be a good tournament. should be a good deck for the tournament. And obviously, PO is, the sh is, is my thing. So, hopefully we'll play tight and uh, maybe get another top eight. Let's battle. Exciting news, everyone. I have just launched a new Patreon. There, you can show support for my content, grab additional weekly metagame recommendations, and even submit a donation deck list. 
Donation deck lists are the most frequently asked question on my channel, and I feel I am now ready to support this new content. Please check out the rules for submissions on the Patreon link in the description, and thank you for your continued support of my channel. Let's battle. Here we go. Round one. Vintage Mana Traders 15k. We're up against uh, es uh, not Esper. This is a Grixis Tinker Underworld Breach deck. Kind of looks like the Brian Cook video. Uh, so what we're seeing is one Lilia, one Ledger Shredder, one DAC, three Consider, three Flusterstorm. What about Pyroblast? Not uh, three, three Flusterstorm, three Pyroblast, three Breach, two Brain Freeze, and a Tinker, three Saga. So yeah, I would suggest I would say this is like way on the heavy side of counter magic. It's going to make for a very hard match for us. Three Flusterstorm, three Pyroblast is not what you want to see, but it's definitely a winnable matchup. So let's see what we can do. Uh, my hand is a classic Ancestral Force, no blue card, no blue source, so we'll mulligan this. This hand is... Oh boy. This hand is not great either, but... And we says this is a keep. Um, we're gonna bottom the card we can't cast, and we're gonna go Island Mana Vault. I guess we can go Tundra Mana Vault, because my opponent is not on Wastelands, and we know that. Um... Where did the list thing go? Kind of want that back. Kind of want the other way of showing this list too. Uh, I'm gonna keep this and bottom this demonic tutor, so that way I can keep Force Merchant Scroll. I'm gonna try to get an ancestral, and hopefully between ancestral and Pyro uh, PO, we can maybe get something going. Oh. All right, I have their list over on another screen now, so I don't have to. Oh, crazy. My opponent has Mulligan to five cards, which is good for us because Fluster and Pyro are so bad for us. Um, like I said in the intro, this deck is specifically made in a way that makes it worse to Pyro and Fluster. Like, I could play Saga. Those are cards are... Saga is extremely good against Fluster and Pyro. But there's just not that much Pyro running around. Um, and, I, and I would rather be, like, more compact and better against the other combo matchups. No, I, I, it's tough because my opponent is super heavy on the breach combo, right? Which makes you want to not be on Saga and not waste time with Saga stuff. It's this one is like somewhere in between. I, I, I don't think Saga is bad here, but it's obviously not as good as it is against, um, like a Jeskai, right? One thing I liked is I saw Ozzy, Ozzy Mandius's, um, PO list and it was playing for Saga, but I still like the list because it had 16 lands, which means it was playing them basically almost all as spells, which I liked a lot. All right, Sapphire Consider. It's a good sign. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure. I would have to probably play a couple more matches with the Saga version versus this kind of Breach deck. Like, the thing with Breach is they can be built in a lot of different ways. And this one is like somewhere between because it's still playing Tinker, but it's also on Triple Breach. So they did find a Volcanic after binning a Force of Will off the top. Um, we do currently beat Flusterstorm. Snapcaster makes my Merchant for Ancestral a lot better. I, I <laughs> I'm going to grab this Ancestral. So, if I were them and I had a Pyroblast, I probably would have Pyroblast Merchant Scroll. So, I, I feel like we can probably rule out Pyroblast, but they may still have Flusterstorm. Any negations in the main? Something to consider. One Force of Negation in the main. And they can hard cast it. It's very unlikely I play this Ancestral on my turn. Even though I want to like hit my land drops and hit Moxon. I think playing into negation would be silly in a, in a way we could really lose this game. Hopefully we just hit a land or a Moxon. Vamp is probably one of the worst draws, obviously. We don't have a black source. All right, I'm their upkeep. I definitely will cast Ancestral, targeting myself. If they want to hard cast negation here, I'll just force it. I'll be pretty happy. 
they have their own ancestral. So if I force this ancestral, storm three, I can still pay for fluster. Okay. They only have three cards left in their hand. So something to like really look out for in a situation where you cast Ancestral and they cast Ancestral is like how bad is Flusterstorm for you? Like does Flusterstorm counter my Ancestral and my counter? Like that would be the nightmare situation. But because we have the Mana Vault, we actually are okay. I wonder what my opponent is in the tank about. It's possible. They have Force. Wow. They had Force and Fluster. Okay. So they go down to one card They and they get three new cards. And then I, hopefully they don't draw a Pyro or a Fluster. <laughs> Not much I can do about it. I mean, their hand was Force, Fluster, Ancestral. It's quite good. Brainstorm, looking for a Pyro or a Fluster. The good news is I do have Snap Ancestral if they do find it. So they found something. Missed up. Oh, they drew a Pyro. All right. Well. Wow. And they hit a land. Okay. So... We're not going to play around Negation anymore because we want to... Uh, yeah, we're just going to try to... Ah, uh, yeah. I'm just going to try to snap uh, Ancestral here. Can't really play around Fluster, so... Um... No, they're on they're on black. They have vampiric. One underground C. Uh I mean this was not a good draw, so I think your opponent opponent says their luck dried up, but this draw was atrocious. <laughs> um these this vampiric Citadel draw is gonna be rough for us. I mean, they're pretty close to just Breach combo. Even just, like, Breach and Double Ancestral is probably game, so. I can't imagine we win this game. We're super far behind. And our hand is just so bad. Triple, four, Quad Volcanic, huh? I mean, I think we're pretty lucky that opponent has Quad Volcanic and not an Urza Saga. This is a kind of game where an Urza Saga actually is pretty good. Like, if my opponent plays an underground, uh, an Underworld Breach here, I'm pretty sure I just concede, right? Like, what am I supposed to do? So, uh, dig through time. Okay. That's good for me, I would say. Oh, no, they left it ancestral. Hmm. So, what's my best draw? <laughs> I don't even know. I'm um, a jet, maybe? A jet? I still don't even have force. I don't even know. This is, like, really rough. These are the cards you want to tutor for, not the cards you want to draw, basically. All right. Four cards. Lotus is, like, is Lotus good? I'm not 100% sure Lotus is even good enough. All right. I mean, that's something. Um, I might cast this balance i lose one card they lose two volcanics and i tap out and lose a snap but it lets me tap out for a mentor is double stone rain kill my guy lose a citadel good enough Probably not. Probably not. It might get better if they like play a saga this turn. Did they mill a misstep? They milled over a misstep.
Like, I don't think this clock ever gets there. So I'm not a hundred. I'm not really worried about losing my Snapcaster Mage. <sighs> this is a rough draw, though, because now they have a black source and it's not a land. Yeah. Like now they can keep Volcanic Saga and still be able to make tokens really easy. This is this is just lost, yeah. Can't really let this one resolve. But I don't really have I mean they just have force backup, right? Yeah. I don't know. Not like like I said, I drew I drew really badly this game. So the special land lets them have a third card in the yard so they can cast a second Ancestral Recall. Which is quite bad for me. <laughs> so now they still need to find uh, one of two Brain Freezes. Or they could find Mox Demonic. Yep, they found Brain Freeze. Alright, so... We had resolved an Ancestral Recall, but drew... Not great cards. The good news is we have stuff for the matchup. Opposition agent is quite good. Um, I don't... I think I probably need more flusters. I might play a soul guide. Um, don't want to play a balance. Uh, I don't really like two Lavinia, but I don't have a problem with one Lavinia. I don't really think I need to keep a swords for Lelia. Kind of feels bad. Don't really want an island. Um... Like for like the problem is Flusterstorm is not like great against Breach itself, but it is good against all the counters they're playing. So, uh, yeah, Mystical can come out as well for Pyro Meta. This is pretty good. I don't really think bringing in Surgical is good. Um, everything else looks fine. Like this, this does look a lot better than this. So, should be fine. My opponent will be bringing in Pyroblast number four and maybe some Shattering Sprees, and that's about it. So, unfortunately, I lose some of my edge, and, and my opponent won't be bringing in Alpine Moon for my Urza Sagas because I don't <laughs> they have my deck list in front of them. My opponent is really just getting one Pyroblast and make some Shattering Sprees, possibly, but they're already basically pre boarded for the matchup, right? With six Flusterstorm Pyroblast, so. Right, I think our deck gets quite a bit better post-board, whereas their deck doesn't get that much better. Like, I do think that game was super winnable if our Ancestral drew us good cards, but... Alright, on the play. What do I have? Yeah, it's a clunker, but... It's a keep. If I hit a, um, any non-Opal Moxin, or even a top off of this probe, we're actually cooking. You have a pretty solid hand. Show me your seven card keep. What do you have for us here? My opponent has Jet Bolt, Triple Land, Consider Cruise. That is not remotely keepable. There is no world in which I keep that hand. <laughs> My opponent said Probe makes you feel bad when you keep a weak hand. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna get a... Hmm. I think I'm gonna get an Underground C, and then I'm gonna play Soul Ring. I'm not gonna play Opal in case my opponent plays, like, Shattering Spree or something. Yeah. I would never keep this hand against PO. Oh, I guess we also, they also have a bolt for Lavinia. It's kind of annoying.
bulk jet considerable one unknown. So I think here I'm going to just uh, vamp for a mana crypt and go for a PO for three. They have to have drawn a counter spell on their top deck. And this will just set us set me up for future future turns. I guess I could theoretically not go with Mana Crypt, and I could instead grab a Sapphire. That might be better. I'm gonna go Sapphire. So my opponent will have to have drawn one of four Pyroblast, four Force of Will, one Negation, three Fluster. I mean, there's like a pretty reasonable chance they drew it, but I'm down to put them on it because they, I mean, I knew their hand, right? And my Lavinia just doesn't do anything because of Lightning Bolt. They top deck something. Or they're playing Consider to find a Force. Okay, Consider. So now they can only find one of five Forces. Nice. Um. Alright, so now I feel like I'm going to... I just think my opponent's hand should not have been a Keep. Hmm. So... To play this Lavinia... I have to play Soul Ring. Oh, yeah, I think I'm just going to ponder for a... I already played my land drop. I don't think playing the Lavinia is good because I can't hold open Fluster for it. But maybe that's fine. I think I'm just going to ponder. I think it's higher upside. Shouldn't have played my land drop. Did I play my land drop right there? Vamp, opal, consider. Yeah, I played tundra. I shouldn't have played my land drop. Um, So am I willing to draw... Yeah, yeah, this is fine. So I will draw... Uh, Narset and Academy. I'm just going to hold up in Flusterstorm instead of playing Soul Ring. Oh, wait. I'm an idiot. Just play Soul Ring. <laughs> that also holds up in Flusterstorm. Okay. I'm in a really good spot. My opponent now has three unknowns, which is a lot of unknowns. But we have a Fluster. We can get to play, like, Lavinia Narset. Um, and then we can play... And then, yeah, I mean, this just looks really strong. All right, Scalding Tarn. We saw that one. Jet All Volks. Am I going to get Shattering Spreed off the top here? I guess I have a Fluster, so that's not too bad. I guess they would still get one thing, though. It's pretty bad, actually, still. Just two copies of Shattering Spree. Oh wait, no, I could probably put uh, one, two. No, I probably I probably would only have three three Fluster Storms, right? Or two Fluster Storms. I can only counter one. Uh, no, I probably would not have played like this without knowing my opponent's hand. So they did have Shattering Spree. Damn. So they're gonna go Soul Ring Sapphire. It's quite brat, quite good for them. I think I'll just counter the Sapphire. Man, this is so good for them. I don't really like Shattering Screen versus PO, but in this exact instance, it was pretty strong. I'm going to save this Sapphire. I have like a Talarian Academy coming up. Maybe I should save the Soul Ring because I have a Talarian Academy coming up. The Sapphire is just so much better for PO. Like, we're still going to be able to play Narset this turn. 
So it's not a huge deal. So I'll use my Academy to play Narset so I can still play. So I'll play Lavinia just in case they drew Force. And then I'll play Narset. So then they have to choose between killing Lavinia and Narset with the Lightning Bolt. Um, would take a PO or a Tinker. Oh, so taking a PO. I think they probably have to bolt Narset. Oh no, sorry friend. Mana Crypt gets countered. They can't cast Cruise, which is good. I guess this fills up, yeah. So they maybe they do actually bolt Lavinia and cast Cruise. Oh no, they have a Narset, so they can't cast Cruise. Both of these stop Cruise. It's pretty fun. All right, so now I know two out of the four cards in their hand. Let's see what they choose to do. Zalalia. Oh, they drew a Tinker. Lavinia counters the cards off of Citadel, so they have to kill it. <laughs> yep. Shattering Spree, my Sapphire. Oh, shit. A Jet's a great draw, so if I can just go Mox and Mox and maybe PO combo off here. Um, Moxen top. So if they have a P force or a fluster or a P or a f any, if they had a counter spell on the top of their library, it's so bad for me. Uh, I could demonic for to fairy and bounce their citadel. Sounds so bad, though. I think I would rather just play top and PO. Second Lavinia is like... I don't even think that's better. Uh, I also don't have a second Lavinia in my deck because I boarded one out. Because it dies to Pyroblast and Bolt. Probably will board the second one out because I kept him Bolt. I'm going to be so sad if this PO gets countered, though. Maybe Tinker is just better. All these things involve me losing to Pyroblast. Everything that involves a counter spell loses to Flusterstorm. No, like I don't think getting Lavinia back is good. I'm just like trying to figure like everything loses to Pyro, right? I don't have any way to not to lose to Pyro. So it's just, do I want to play around Fluster by maybe Demonicking for Teferi? I don't think I want to Demonic for Tinker because I already have a PO. I think I'm just going to get a top in PO. Yeah, I guess they would have Pyroed Narset. That is true. So maybe I should play around Fluster. I, why would I play Saga? That card is so bad. All right, see if they have it on top. Nope. Okay, so we continue. Though none of these cards... I think I don't care about Mentor right now. I care more about continuing to draw cards that matter. I think what I'm going to do is spin and look for another PO or something. Well, those are bad. There's a PO. So if I were to draw, I could dress down into PO, but then I'm a mana short. 
So let's just draw PO. I guess this isn't even that good. It's only for three, but it all completely resets my mana. This looks pretty pretty bad for me, doesn't it? Maybe I played this poorly. I feel like I probably must have played this pretty badly. I feel like we're pretty dead. I guess I have top, look at top, and then I have four mana still. Um, hey, so we could play a Narset again and get another force and hope that two forces gets me to the next turn. Good God. How bad, how bad did this go? I had other options. Maybe I should have just tinkered. Kind of feels like I punted this game. But I didn't really feel like with Opal, Jet, Hop, I would fizzle. I think I draw the top, draw with top and draw the force and then. Or do I just draw the force? There's my Teferi. That's what I was looking for. All right, well, I have double force Narset against Citadel Crew's two unknowns. I don't think I'm favored from here. I must have played this badly. I must have played this badly. Shattering Spree on Mana Vault. Yeah. Demonic Tutor. Force. What's the fucking point, man? I, I, I think I, like, top PO for five cards, like, with a Talarian Academy, it doesn't feel like that should fizzle. I wow, they passed the turn. So my opponent's top three cards were Shattering Spree, Demonic Tutor, Underworld Breach, but then they had to pass because they hit Saga. They should have replicated more. I agree. I agree. All right, now, now I have Tinker and Teferi. That's got to be good enough. Maybe I should have kept Fluster. Uh, Fluster's pretty bad. All right, I have a force. Okay, so now I feel pretty good. So I will just do Teferi. This will blank a Fluster on top. <laughs> Are they putting... Wait... So they're going to draw one and put two back. Whatever, sure. Do your thing. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> they they knew what they were doing. They said they said in chat this is going to feel bad. So they they must have something that they're trying to do. Don't know exactly what it is, but
I don't know. I feel very lucky. It's so weird. This game, I feel very unlucky to be in the spot I am, but I also feel super lucky to be winning. So, you know, we'll take it, I guess. I don't know. Did, was my PO really bad? Maybe my PO line was just bad. All right. Well, this game is not too hard for me. I just play this to fairy. I tinker my opal into a citadel um, and, and bounce their citadel and we should be good to go. PO for, I peeled for like five. <laughs> All right. I'm off of this Lavinia if they're keeping in lightning bolts as well. Um, I guess I'll just put Mystical back. Maybe I'll put the sword. How many Lelias? They only have one Lelia. I'll put the Mystical back in. Uh, no, the only reason I won Slasher is because my opponent had a Saga in their deck. So they hit the Saga off of their Citadel and bricked. That's how. We, that's why we won. Saga won us the game again. It's crazy how much Saga wins for the opponent. It's absolutely wild. <sighs> okay. Um, Surgical Extraction is a card that I'm thinking about. I just don't think it's good. No, that's the whole point log, is that Saga is not in a land slot. It could have been a Consider. They could have played a fourth Consider. And then we would have lost, because they would have just found their Demonic in their Breach and killed me. But instead of playing a, a, a Cantrip that helps you win the game, instead, you have a land that bricks your Citadel. Wow! Consider Mills a card, Slasher. Oh my god. How do you not know how to read? <sighs> it's crazy. It's crazy. Still to this day. Saga has, <laughs> Slasher has not learned how to read. This hand is not good. This hand is so bad. I'm going to mulligan this hand. No moxin. This hand is quite bad. This hand isn't better, but at least I have a probe and a and some castables. I really need Moxin for my deck to work. <laughs> my opponent has their one Lelia, one Urza Saga, one Consider, one Demonic, one Dak Faden. Oh no. Am I going to play this Soul Ring and just have it get Dak Faden after my opponent considers into a Moxon? I guess they have to consider into a blue or red Moxon. I guess they could just negate it. This looks really bad for me. This hand, I don't think this hand is like particularly good. But I think it's going to kick the shit out of my draw. Do I mental misstep this consider? I think I have to. All right. So if my opponent doesn't draw anything good, Plays a Saga and passes. We have Time Walk into Yagwo, maybe? Now, if the Saga was an Underground Sea, we would be in much worse shape. I guess the opponent has a Negation. At least that'll get rid of the Dak Faden, though. <laughs> I, I hate this game so much. Fantastic. I've never seen Shattering Spree be so good against PO. All right, I need a Moxon or a land. Not an Opal. All right, Sapphire's a great draw. We're going to start with a Time Walk. All right. Um, What do I want? 
So I, my opponent still has negation DAC, which is problematic. I, I think Spree is just bad against the average PO draw. Like if I have like PO up or something like that, it's just so bad against that. But um, So what am I doing with this Merchant Scroll? Am I just trying to get an Ancestral? Am I getting a Force? Assuming my opponent doesn't draw a land, they have no plays. If my opponent draws a land, they can Dak Demonic or Negation or uh, Dak Demonic Negation or Lelia. Like, a lot, like, most of the time, Shattering Spree, like, is just not a castable card through Flusterstorm P.O., holding up Flusterstorm P.O., but I just, like, haven't had hands where it's been, uh, I just, like, haven't had mocks in heavy hands. I'm just gonna get a Force. I need them to Brick here, and then I need to draw a Moxin and cast Yagwell. They did not brick, of course. So now we're dead. Though if they play Dak Fade and they take out their... They don't have negation anymore. Okay, so I can win this game. So I just force this, and then I top deck a Moxin and I Yogg will and they're like super far behind. Okay, I mean, if my opponent's going to tap off of negation, so be it. Uh, Moxin, non-opal, non-opal Moxin. Yeah, maybe I'll maybe I'll hit uh, Black Lotus. Ruby Soul Guide Lantern. This is so bad. They're just gonna kill me. They have full. I guess I have Soul Guide Lantern, so I can't get Breach killed here, because they're gonna get a so They're gonna get a Lotus. I think we actually just have to get this lantern. Oh, if we don't have this lantern, it would have been we would have been dead to Lotus uh, Demonic Breach Demonic uh, frame, frame Freeze. So, but my, I'm still dead. Like my opponent is still going to Demonic and kill us here, and like I'm not going to be able to cast this Yogwell. Guess we're just gonna lose. <laughs> uh, sad Justin. Very sad Justin here. At this point, though, they probably just demonic for ancestral, right? I guess they can demonic for shattering spree. Hit this and this, and I'm probably dying too. They could just demonic time walk and hit twice with Lelia, right? No, I don't have enough lands for that. I really needed them to brick on a land. <laughs> oh, they're just gonna cast Lelia. Okay. Demonic is so good in breach. It's crazy. Fucking hell, really? Ah, not good. Not good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, these shattering sprees have been unre unreasonably good. I'm I'm very dead here. I did think I was winning this game if I hit a moxin though, because my opponent tapped off of negation for no reason. There's, I think my opponent should just play Lelia last turn instead of playing Dak Vader and hold open negation plus Lelia. I don't understand why they tapped off it. I just am not going to be able to rebuild fast enough, and my opponent will d then just, like, they hit land, so they actually have Black Source for Demonic now off of one Underground Sea. Yeah, this, 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 this match went about as bad as it possibly could go. I think this game is 1-2 if I don't misstep Consider and I hold it for Shattering Spree, maybe? <laughs> it's really hard to do that. My opponent doesn't care about losing Lotus anymore because they have the win in play. 
So I know that I have uh, a top, and then I have Ruby Underground C, but like by the time I do that, I'm gonna be dead, so. Oh yeah, they're gonna Shattering Spree for two and Demonic. <laughs> Unreal. Yeah. What's a guy to do? I feel incredibly unlucky, <laughs> but... Why is copying on Lantern a good play? I have already used my misstep. Well, unfortunately, that just didn't go well. You could just have the first target be on the right thing, Zajad. No, I know my top decks. I spun a top. My top deck is... I have Ruby and Underground, see? So I, I know what my top decks are. And my opponent has blue card force. Because they cast the Monic Tutor. I, I'm out. I'm, I'm dead. <laughs> I do feel like we were, you know, maybe gifted round two a little bit, so... Our game two, anyways, so. Yeah, I don't know. The only choice I would I could make differently in this game is should I misstep consider? That's the only thing. Like, if I had a soul ring in this game, I think we win. Like, Yogwill is another reason Shattering Spree against PO is so bad. I could just bring all the things back you Shattering Spree. I don't know. I really think, like, it's fine. Like, I'm pretty sure you boarded it in, but that was the most overperforming set Shattering Spree that I've ever seen. All right, we got to win out. Okay, here we go. Round two. We got to win all six rounds from now on. Our opponent is playing Jewel Shops. So they are on, you know, four Coveted Jewel, four Paradox of Outcome, four Force of Will, Mishra's Workshop combo deck. Um, should be a pretty reasonable matchup for us. We have some main deck Lavinias. We're on the play. Uh, see what we can do. Here's our Lavinia, and here is our Underground Sea Talarian Academy. Um, I would not keep a hand without Force of Will against my opponent's deck, unless it has, like, turn one Lavinia, so uh, I'm gonna mulligan this hand. My opponent's deck is just, like, a, a hyper-aggressive combo deck. You need to have a Force, or your own combo. Uh, <laughs> this is gonna stretch my definition, huh? I do have, um, Put Island Away, Brainstorm with a Fetch Land... And if it doesn't even work out, I can still combo on the next turn. Uh, I could even Mystical into Brainstorm for a something, right? So if I... Can I Tinker this turn? No, because if I Mystical into Brainstorm for something, I will only have two blue. I mean, I'm going to keep this hand. I think this is enough combo-oriented to warrant keeping. Um, I'm just... Interested to see what I want to do. I think I'm going to... Um, I think I'm going to Brainstorm. Because if I hit up PO, I want, I want to just cast PO. Wow. Um, those are bad. I don't have Fluster. Alright, well, I have to hope I don't die on turn one. Don't think I want to cast Dress Down. Well, actually, casting Dress Down lets me blind hit Force of Will. Well, no, I can hold Dress Down in case they have Metamorph, right? Or no. How the fuck does Meta? I think this stops Metamorph. Even if Metamorph is entering as a non-creature? 
Uh, dress down, metamorph, magic the gathering. Uh, can't remember. I'm pretty sure it just kills it. We'll find out together, I guess. Either way, it's probably better than... Trying to blind hit a force. Saga? That's a good sign. It's not a Mishra's Workshop. Also, we have Dress Down for Saga now. Uh, Alright. Grim. Is that it? Uh, P.O. for three? No. Okay. Um, so now we have to choose between P.O. and Tinker. I think I'm just going to choose P.O. because my opponent can easily have their own force. And I don't want to lose my Opal. I think it just makes more sense to P.O. This plays around force better. And my opponent didn't have a turn one hand, so maybe they have a force. I'm going to take P.O. I just, like, see a world where I, you know, tinker, it gets forced, and then I can't play magic, which seems really bad to me. And it's still PO for three, and as Raphael says, PO for three never loses, so... I guess we'll find out together. Uh, do I want to not tap my mana vault? No. No, I'm going to tap my mana vault. Mm. Yeah, I want an extra blue-black mana. Mm, they have PO in response for three. Oh, they're going to they're going to Odawara in response. <laughs> yeah, sure. I, I am pretty confident I don't want to dress down first. Yeah, it's kind of my backup plan. Oh, yeah, we're in good shape now. We are in good shape now. Uh, I'll just take the three. It's fine. Like, I'm, like the, 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 the line I chose is the line that plays around force of will the best. Um, and if I want to continue playing around Force of Will, not playing Dress Down is the best play, right? Chromatic Lantern, sure. My opponent's hand is, like, pretty weak. It's all on Saga, and I have Dress Downs in my deck, which is probably not the way you want to go. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll just take my three as punishment for playing this. Now I have Snap PO. Um, I also have Snap Mystical Dress. That's not very good. Uh, I guess we can Snap PO. I didn't need to tap all that shit, but I can't imagine how this wouldn't resolve, so I just did anyway. <laughs> loose. Very loose. All right, we do another PO. So that's two POs, depending on if we draw more blue sources. But I did draw a top, which is an additional two draws off of the PO. All right, we drew an academy. So I can't imagine we don't have enough gas here. Uh, 
snap. Theo. Yeah, we're we're deterministic. It's gonna just take a little bit. I probably could have just sacked the mana group. Uh, I'll just let it go. I'm just going to get uh, the mentor. Sure, you got it. I just have to not go to four. Okay, <laughs> I, I could probably actually just do like even go to four and uh, do a double Citadel activation. Nothing matters. All right, so my opponent is Jewel Shops. I want Opposition Agent for Saga. Maybe? Doesn't seem great, but it also attacks and takes Coveted Jewels. So it's probably fine. And then... I don't want swords. I don't want balance. I keep dressed down. Um, I wonder if like I don't think I want more fluster storms. They have four force, four po, three dismember. I probably want a hercules in case they trinisphere me. Narset's really good in this matchup. I uh, don't need this island. Um, mental misstep. Top recall, mana vault, sapphire. It's a little bit of a weak mental misstep, but the hits are still good. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're, we're mulliganing to openers that make sense against the deck we're playing against for sure. Well, I mean, breach was not a matchup. You have to have force. I don't believe that's the case. But I don't really think I like anything else here. I think if you went up more Fluster Storms, it would be diluting your deck too much. I'm going to do something like this. I like this matchup um, from the PO side, especially if you have Lavinia's. Yeah, second Hercule over Misstep, maybe. I don't know. Like, Misstep is still very good at, like, the cards it hits are really strong, right? Top top soul ring manifold key manifold ancestral but maybe it's too narrow this hand doesn't have a force so i'm gonna mulligan it i don't think like misstep is enough to get me there usually so saga is just completely irrelevant as a, t a token maker in this matchup um it is pretty good at finding them a top which helps them refuel but i'm not really worried about saga tokens i'm just gonna mulligan this hand uh I think I'm gonna mulligan this hand as well. I just I want to have a hand with the force and a combo or one of the other at least. Okay, well this is the hand we're going to keep. Um, I think at five I'm willing to just put these two lands away and try to make it work. Like once you're below five, like a force is not even very good. So we'll see what our opponent keeps. Like if this hand, if this hand draws, um, you know, if I get a t oh, another saga lead, it's 
kind of crazy because like when they're not leading workshop, their deck is so much worse. Oh, I would have had a mental misstep on a soul ring, huh? Kind of unfortunate. But I mean, I'm happy to see Saga leads because it means I'm not getting like turn one jeweled. We take the we take those. All right, so I have some nice outs to play a really powerful turn one. That's not really it. All right, so now we have to ponder. Though pondering into a Moxin is still quite good here. <laughs> uh, yeah, those are all dead. Yep, all right. My opponent's going to kill me. I mean, we had four looks for a Moxon to PO for three to start. Like, it's fine. Underground C. I didn't even know they had an Underground C. All right, yeah, my opponent has infinite mana here. Pass? How are they keeping hands like this? I mean, game on, I guess. So they have hard cast force. So I think I'm going to play and crack this fetch land so that I can save my academy activation. Okay. Oh, they have Hercules Recall. One, two, three, four. So I can Bluster Storm, which will tap them off of Saga. Buy me some time, maybe. Yeah, it's bad. It's right. It's very bad. Urkel's Recall is like serviceable against Pio. It does act as another counter spell, so pretty reasonable. Never gonna play around it, so especially not when my opponent has this much of a mana advantage. So my opponent can either choose I should not have six. <laughs> yeah, my opponent is gonna pay. Um and then they're not gonna get a saga token which will buy me like an extra turn. But in 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 general I think my opponent is likely to not even need a Saga token, just get a top and find a, a, a Jewel or a PO and win the game, so. Uh, what? Oh, my opponent is deciding to uh, get the Saga token and Hercules recall me again. Okay, yeah, sure, you got it. I mean, yeah, I don't know if I would keep in Hercules against me. So, I, I don't know. This is my opponent going in on Saga tokens, but I feel like that's not necessary. I feel like my opponent should go in, just like, be happy with one Saga token or zero Saga tokens, just get a top and try to win that way. But me, I mean, like, in this situation, I can draw one of my two dress downs, and they, you, they like have a serious issue i guess they'll still have a top so maybe it's not a serious issue mm, whatever i mean we're, we're this is kind of how the matchup goes there's your top but now like they can't spin the top and find a po well now they can spin the top and find a po this does kill me pretty quickly though so maybe it's fine I do think I would have held the second recall, though, and just lost one Saga token, because then you can stop my next PO, too. Feels weird to cast both both Hercules there. Don't really like that play very much. Oh, they have a Trinosphere. Okay, you were right. Um, So I just need to dress down now. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I mean, I'm old to five. Didn't have the resources needed to win. 
that's not too bad. Um, I still don't feel like I want to change how I'm boarding. We're just like gonna try to murder them on the play. All they can have are four force of wills. So I guess they also have a negation post board. So they have five force of wills. But like if we can just play a turn one Lavinia, their deck doesn't really function. So, oh, maybe I want to take this misstep out. I don't know. Hercules Recall is just like not very good against them. Well, Buster is like only good if it works, right? And they had so much mana. Their deck makes a lot of mana. It can work, but like if they're tapping two mana and have like four mana to pay, it's like kind of rough. Oh, uh, it hasn't been a good start, so we'll see. We might be playing the challenge instead. <laughs> just let me have time to get lunch, though. Would I like to play first? Yeah. What do I have? I've got force and turn two to fairy. I, they just have so little fluster targets. Yeah, this might be better though. Am I keeping this hand? I think I have to. Tain has like a lot of action. Not a lot of action, sorry. It has like good cards and it has good mana. I think it's fine. I'll probably lead on Fetch. Fetch Jet Opal. And then, yeah, this, I mean, this is fine. Don't. Let's we'll see what happens. My opponent kept what six card hand. Turn two to fairy is fine. I'm not sure it's good. Turns off like their Hercules and their forces though. Like if this hand didn't have force, I probably wouldn't keep it. Underground sea. So my opponent has led on some like really weak lands compared to like the workshop draws. This is we have. Demonic Tutor. Yeah, I mean, I think that's fine in this case. I guess I can, like, technically get... Yeah, I, it, like, this isn't... This isn't... Other matchups, I would think about countering this Tutor, but I don't feel like this Tutor is super good in this matchup that you need to counter it. You can actually play, like, the traditional heuristic where you let the Tutor resolve and counter the spell they get. Especially with Teferi. And, like, they can't... Like, even if they get Saga, we have Saga answered, too, so... I mean, if they get Saga, I'm super happy. That's just a big win in my book. I'm going to get a Tundra. Then what do we draw? We drew a Sapphire. Okay. I mean, it's pretty sweet. If they force this, I can't really force back, though. I'm going to bounce because I'm trying to win the game on this turn. I have the mana to do so. I mean, I have like a million mana, but I have no action. I have double redraws. I have hard cast force now, so I can cycle this dress down as well. Let's see if they got Saga. Yep. Okay. So now we're going to hold this dress down. This is, I think, uh, no, they just had Saga. They went for, they went for Tinker. I, I don't think Saga is the key card in the matchup, right? This is really good value though. I get to counter their spell and got rid of their Moxin. So quite solid and they can't counter back because of Teferi. So, like, that's pretty nice. This worked out quite well. My opponent is pretty far behind, but I technically have nothing in my hand, so.
Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Good game opponent. Not going to pick up this Teferi. All right, that's game. To be fair, that's also what I would do. Wait, no, I didn't do that. I was thinking about DT for Snap. I think DT for Snap is worse than DT for Tinker. Maybe. Not 100% sure. Maybe it's not. What's DT for Snap? Sounds fun. I guess I could snap and then DT for Tinker later. DT does both. All right, yeah. We are super, super deterministic at this point. But I'll PO again for fun. Any mentor? No mentor. Yeah, we have infinite mana, right? So, or not infinite mana, but we have so much mana that DT for snap is just super good. Uh, I guess I'll, I don't even want to vamp for mentor. I'm just going to PO again. <laughs> it's too much fun. Just draw my deck like seven at a time, making mana all along the way. Show me your secrets. Did they have a force? They did. They had they had force Hercules backup. So the Teferi was actually nuts. That's pretty cool. All right, let's hard cast Citadel and activate twice for fun. All right, activate Citadel. What am I missing? Uh, I need another permanent. No, we got our storm count super high. I don't want them to concede. All right, take 10, cast Yogwill. Replay. No, I was almost there. We would have storm counted up to like 50, 60. Ah, beautiful. All right, we're back. Okay, here we go. Round three. Got to keep winning. We're up against uh, Alexander, who is on, it says four color control, but it's actually like a four color underworld breach deck with no tinker. So maybe you can say four color control. Uh, but three breach, two brain freeze, three Ragavan, some Teferis, a Mentor. So it's somewhere between Jeskai and it's like a Jeskai breach deck, actually. But, you know, it's pretty fully four colors. One whole breacher in the board. What about Pyros and Flusters? Two Pyros, two Bolts, no Fluster? I don't see any Flusters. Interesting deck, very interesting build. Yeah, I don't see any flusters. Interesting deck. Let's see what happens here. Uh, I am started. I am... Okay, what do I have? Uh, I have almost... Yeah, this is a capable hand. 
especially against no flusters. I find it really hard to imagine zero flusters in the 75 is correct. But... It's going to be Ragavan. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to force Ragavan. I don't really care. I'm just going to try to hit a Moxin off the top and go tinker with double force back up. There was a Mana Crypt on top of my library, <laughs> so if I had forced this Ragavan, I would be a much happier Justin. What can I say? It's a lot of Moxin. Aren't I the Tinker deck? Why do you have more Moxin than me? Are we going to cast Expressive Iteration with no land drop? Jesus. All right. Well, this went really bad for me not forcing the Ragavan. I still don't really like forcing Ragavan here, but... Kind of wild. Vampiric Tutor. So they didn't hit a land drop off of their expressive iteration. And now they have no red source for their Ragavan. So that's fun. Moxon? I drew Moxon anyways. All right. I'm going to jam Tinker with two force back up. And they have no... They have to have double force in their hand. Interesting. I don't know. I think Ragavan is not a very strong magic card. Um, am I willing to lose three life and play this Yogwo? Oh yeah, I had double force, so they don't can't even have double force. Yeah, I think I'm willing to go through this top card here. I don't really get very much off of this Yogwo, but I guess I should play the top card before that one. Uh, if I hit a blue, like an opal, I can tinker for a... Okay, I didn't hit anything else, so that's the end of my turn. This does block Ragavan, though, so... Now I don't even have to force Ragavan if they had it. Oh, I, I even got Mana Crypt on my side. All right, blue for preordain. I'm okay with this. I don't care. Unless it's going to stop me from winning. Don't really matter much to me. I'm just going to like mystical for PO later. Probably is the plan. What is this? Teferi. Nice. Teferi plus uh, force didn't even get there. So, all right. In not an interesting game, but... So my opponent is on... Oh, my opponent is on no sagas. Wow. What an interesting deck. So it's a four-color breach control deck with Gush Sanctuary, no Fluster Storms. What an interesting build. So Opposition Agent actually looks quite bad. It does stop Vamp, Demonic, and Fetches. Huh. I'm not 100% sure how I'm supposed to board here. This is how I would normally board. Bird. I don't think I care about Ragavans. Uh, they do have Mentor, but that's not really how we're winning. They, I don't need these Dress Downs. Though these Lavinias aren't great. What are they bringing in? They're bringing in Shattering Spree, Hole Breacher. Uh, maybe I do this? I mean, Mystical is like super bad versus them too. So maybe it's just this. I guess that looks okay. It's such an interesting build. Mm, nah. I have a dress down. I don't want to play one swords for a whole breacher. Really just don't want to do that. Not even sure this hand is good. Might be okay. They're a pretty slow deck. I boarded out a dress down. 
not both dress downs. I have two dress downs in my deck. Wow, they have a mox again. How many moxes are in their deck? Four moxes. Uh, sure. Mystical is just like really not a great card against um pyroblast decks. Are you just going for it? The good news is I have a lantern for a breach draw, so I'm not even super scared of a breach draw. I have like lantern plus Lavinia. Let's get this DT out of their yard with this lantern is super high value. Yeah, I did drag both initially. That is true. I like really happy if they DT'd for a breach or a lotus and I just have lantern double force, you know? Their mana situation looks so rough with two C, two Tundra, two Volcanic. It's crazy. How can you play two Volcanic and then play three Shattering Spree? That's that's wild to me. I think I'm going to play this Lavinia and not ponder with fetch. But I'm not 100% sure. They don't have a red source currently, so I'm not super worried about Pyro. Maybe I'm supposed to play ponder with fetch and then play soul ring. Like, if they force this, I'm super happy. Let it happen. Don't care. Like, I'm just so surprised. Like, our, the first Breach opponent we played against had three Fluster, four Pyro. This Breach opponent has zero Fluster, two Pyro, and they're supposed to be the controlling version. <laughs> it's kind of odd, right? Preordain gaming. <sighs> Ancestral. They can have a pyro off of their Black Lotus. Sure. Can't force it. They're a uh, four color. Oh, so they, they're going to crack the Lotus for Pyro. And they're going to Pyro it. Um, really don't want to run into like another Pyro though. I think I have to let that go. All right, well, I'm glad I let it go because this is definitely worse for me. So this definitely resolves. So now I kind of have to get worried about like mystical sanctuary back ancestral. I guess I could just hit their yard right now if I wanted to. That gets ancestral and lotus. Brainstorm. Do I want to brainstorm lock myself? Not really. So good if I hit Tinker, though. Wait, it's not good if I hit Tinker. What am I talking about? All right, I don't want this force. I think I just want to fetch all this away. That was probably a bad brainstorm now that I'm going to think about it a little bit more. <laughs> uh... All right, I, I don't know if I'm allowed to crack this lantern. So the problem is, if my opponent goes fetch land, and then they play breach, and I respond by activating lantern, and then they mystical their ancestral to the top. Yeah, that brainstorm was really bad. I don't know why I did that. So I think I just have to hit their yard right now. So what do they win with? They still have a mentor in their deck. 
and three Ragavans. I'm just super worried about Bre uh, Mystic uh, Fetchland and and Breach. I'm just gonna hit their yard. I'm not sure this is correct. There's the there's the fetch land. I'm like in pretty decent amount of trouble here. Don't really have good draws. Uh. I right, use brainstorm. Maybe Lavinia can attack for lethal. I doubt it. They have two bolts. I only have one Pyroblast left. You should play a Ragavan. Oh, they played the Mystic Sanctuary. That's fun. I am gonna fetch. Get look at get out of my deck. Yo is fine here. I don't want to play more Moxin in case they Shattering Spree me. It's a pretty anemic battle happening right now. They can actually hard cast uh, Force of Will now, which is really brutal. I can't imagine this goes well for me. Express Iteration has to be one of their best draws here. They found a gush. That's not great. <laughs> Sorry, friend. You had the five lands to cast gush, but you forgot the other line of text. This does let them Mystic Sanctuary back expressive iteration, though, so maybe worth. Maybe that was the plan. Uh, they do have a pedal in their deck. It's true. <laughs> ah, I'm going to hold it all. I'm in pain. All right, so my opponent gets to cast another expressive iteration. That can't be good for me. I wouldn't have played the land first, though, unless you're representing Pyro. Uh, P.O. Mentor. Demonic. Ancestral. All the restricted cards. Narset. Alright, well, at least I have a Lavinia in play. Hopefully they don't find Blast or Bolt off of it. They found Brain Freeze. Alright. Our, our own Narset is a pretty good hit against the four preordained deck. I have to take a turn off and attack this Narset. They're tapped out though. If I draw, they're tapped out, and I have a Lavinia in play. If I draw, well, I have to be Tinker because I can't draw PO anymore. I drew another Jet. Dun, 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 dun. All right, cool. I've drawn every Mox in every turn this game. <laughs> All right, Narset has to get attacked. The biggest problem is wait, where did this dig through time come from? Oh, I guess they can't cast Dig Through Time because of Lavinia. <laughs> oh, they're pitching to hand size. Brilliant. Uh, to Fairy, bounce my Lavinia. Yeah, it's bad for me. It's quite bad for me. Oh, they drew Bolt as well. All right. My opponent is... I mean, they are a preordained expressive iteration deck, so theoretically they should top deck better than me, but it was fairly rough things that happened in this game. It's kind of like we're playing against Jeskai Control, but they just don't have enough counter spells. Like, they're only playing six, seven counter spells. Uh, 
Maybe I shouldn't have forced Hole Breacher. So they have Breach, Storm Count, 18. So if they hit Petal, they can probably just Breach me out of this game. They just need to hit Petal. They did not hit pedal. <laughs> no play jet opponent. Uh... <laughs> so opponent milled for 18 and missed on pedal. 11 cards left in the deck. This is game two. Wow. Okay. I mean, they still have two more breaches. No, they have one more breach. So they could still like breach mentor walk. No, I didn't bring in surgical. Wait, where'd my Lavin Oh, my Lavinia was bolted. I drew another Moxin, by the way. Gush can be cast. Yeah, no, Breach gives you um, casting cost equal to the mana cost. You can't uh, Breach alternate cost, gush. My opponent just needs to play the third. Watch them hit my best spell off this Ragavan after I drew four fucking Moxen. <laughs> nope, there was another Moxen. Got him. Got him. Got him. Top. All right, so I'm going to bait Mental Misstep with this Mana Vault. All right, well, now I'm going to try to play a top. I can't draw this turn. Uh, they, they held it. Damn it. So smart. So smart. How is my opponent so smart? Ah, shit. I still, like, lose to Mentor Walk, though, right? Or even just like breach brain freeze a couple times, maybe. I guess I just lose this Ragavan too. They hit my demonic tutor. They hit my demonic tutor. They hit my demonic tutor. All right, fair enough, I guess. I'm not very lucky. As someone, as one of my Twitch chat, uh, my, my YouTube commenters pointed out, I'm very bad at drawing good cards off the top. So, wait, they went time walk. Are they just gonna go for like two time walks with a monkey? Oh, bolt, bolt. Ah, deterministic with bolts. Okay. All right, yeah. I didn't top deck well. <laughs> I was going to draw a mana crypt. Oh, okay, fair enough, fair enough. Um, Maybe I will play one swords. Like, all I want to do is force a PO through with a fluster. And my opponent shouldn't really be able to beat it. They just don't have enough. They don't have any flusters of their own. Ragavan is just not very good. <laughs> any any card is winning there. Ragavan is not the one that is like Ragavan is not even deterministically winning there. Whereas if you had another card, it could be deterministic. Like it's just not a very strong card. Uh, this hand sucks. Mystical is probably fine. All right, this hand is sweet. Keep. Um. Just gonna bottom this lantern and then we're gonna go play our mana vault, which will let us play a land and ponder if we want to next turn, or if we draw a fluster storm. I actually think it's overrated in general. 
as well. I think it shouldn't have banned in, be banned in Legacy, and I don't think it's that good in Modern. So I think Ragavan is one of the single most overrated cards ever printed. It's a card that makes people feel bad, but it's not a card that is like particularly good. I mean, it's fine. It's not bad. Obviously, it has a lot of text on it, but I don't know. I'm not. I'm not convinced that it's as good as people think it is. Interesting. This actually plays around. So what I'm going to do. What am I going to do? Uh, I don't know. I think Dragon Rage Channeler is better than Ragavan. So, I guess the discussion isn't over. I think I'm going to draw Opal, play my Moxin, pass the turn. That's my plan. I don't want to play into this Pyroblast or the Negation. Uh, I want to play on their turn, preferably in a way that taps them out, and then I'll resolve a Tinker after. I mean, you also probably just shouldn't be playing one drops or one drop red creatures. So um, now they have. Yeah, I'm still going to just use this end step stuff. It does tap off my my mana vault, but I think it's fine. I could wait. I could wait. I'm never patient enough in this scenario. They have like Pyro Force. I look pretty silly. But what are they gonna fucking tap out for? There's like nothing they can, like their deck doesn't have cards in it. it doesn't tap out. Are they gonna hard cast negation? Oh, they have a hole breacher. I hate this game so much. They have their one hole breacher. It's so fucked up. I should have played it in upkeep. <laughs> so sickening. All right, well, I guess I'm out of this tournament. I didn't play around one of Hole Breacher, and I get paid for it. <sighs> it's my mistake. I should have done it in upkeep. I could have done it in upkeep. I should have done it in upkeep. It was my own fault. Oh, they had negation, force of will. All right, cool. Awesome. Sweet. Uh so sickening. No, it's my fault. I should have just done it in upkeep. Make them have Pyro or Force. It was stupid. It was just a misplay. Like, if I do it in upkeep and they Force, then I can untap and Tinker and I beat Hole Breacher, right? So, I should have played around the one Hole Breacher. Should I drop and play the challenge? I don't even know if I want to do that. I hate this game. Oh my god. Alright, cool. Great. That's fucking terrible. All right, we're here at 1-2. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I played super well today. There were just, like, small mistakes that could have been done better. And, like, we obviously had a rough pairing in round one, but in round two, we just got demolished in a way that I could have played around, right? Um, so if you want to play this deck, I think this deck is super good. And if you want to play this deck, I would make a couple changes for a, uh, for, um, a challenge metagame. I'm going to cut down on strands. 
I'm going to add Misty, I'm going to add Scalding Tarn, and I'm going to add um, a Delta. And that will fix our mana base. And then I'm going to take out a Dress Down, put a Hercules in the main. That's going to give us better against Shops, because uh, there's been a bit, bit, bit uprising in Shops. Uh, I think I'm going to take out this Surgical Extraction and put a... Um, I don't know. I have some flex slots here in my sideboard. Kind of think I'm a little light on graveyard hate. Maybe a second tabernacle. Oh, I want to play a Caracas. Because I think there's a bunch of Lavinias that should just start popping up with like the amount of oops all spells and that kind of thing. So maybe something like this. This is kind of how I would change it. Um, like I said, I think this was a great deck choice for the metagame. Obviously, the six, uh, the seven, the four Pyroblast, three Flusterstorm Breach deck is not a good matchup. Um, specifically for this deck and especially without Saga. Uh, obviously the other one is fine. I actually think the matchup versus that controlling Breach deck should have been pretty pretty reasonable with only five forces, two Pyro, and no additional counter spells. Uh, but I failed to play around Hole Breacher in, that, in the end. That was a small mistake that cost me. Um, it was like a, not an unreasonable thing to do to try to make them play like Preordain and tap out and find a window to resolve Pyro uh, to py resolve um, PO, but in, in general, like, I should just play it in the upkeep, and, and if they have Pyro, they have Pyro. Uh, it's possible in that game that they had Pyro, Hull Breacher, Force of Will, and Force of Negation, and I just had no chance of winning anyways, uh, which would be unfortunate, but that could have also been the case as well. Um, I want Caracas very specifically to bounce Lavinia. Very specifically, I think that you should see more Lavinias in the future, and so that's why I'm building a Caracas into this pile. Um, yeah. So thank you for watching. I know this wasn't, you know, the top eight that we had last time for the Mana Traders, but you can't win every tournament you register in, especially when you don't play to your peak potential. Uh, new vintage videos Monday, Wednesday, Friday on my channel, 11 a.m. Eastern on YouTube. Uh, see you then.